The Icons Global Championship 2022 is close and it's time to highlight one of the most powerful regions in Wild Rift, the WRL. For this video we are going to take a closer look at FPX Jazzy's Corky in Game 4 of the Best of 7 Grand Final Series between JD Gaming and Fun Plus Phoenix. Watching this video will teach you the following. Understanding the idea behind Hullbreaker, Black Cleaver and Divine Sundra on Corky. How to maneuver around the map as Corky. What to do with your package, how to punish people in lane and how you teamfight with Corky. Corky is a ranged champion that loves to poke out the enemy by utilizing hot attacks and spells alike. In this instance, Jazzy is forced to briefly deal with Lemon and Juju in his lane as they try to secure the push during the early game to shackle Jazzy to lane. However, due to Jazzy's champion choice, they are forced to pay for that push with their HP bars. This exemplifies Corky's power to neutralize and capitalize on matchups perfectly. Take notice of how Jazzy is constantly hitting Juju and Lemon for every action within that early game. Making use of this is mandatory to become one of the best Corky players such as Jazzy. To give you a better understanding of what you should be doing, let's talk about the most important part of Corky's laning. For one, you have to spot the enemy's relative position to you and seize any chance given to deal damage to them without exposing yourself. You can easily do that by waiting for them to try and get a last hit. The other way of piloting Corky is about using his spells to slowly chip down the enemy laner up to a point at which they cannot lane anymore due to the HP bar being almost depleted. Just for clarification, this BO was played on another patch, which means objective still spawned at 4 minutes. As a consequence, we see Jazzy recall and change up the lane assignment. For Corky, this is an easy feat as it allows him to freely clear the incoming waves of his dragon lane while his teammates Zhao Ma and Lei are now unleashed from their previous lane assignment. Briefly before the clock hits 4 minutes into the game, you should consider taking a recall like Jazzy does. He cleared the last wave in the dragon lane to get back to base in order to pick up the most powerful tool Corky has to offer, the package. It spawns after 4 minutes into the game and can be picked up next to the fountain in Corky's base. With this tool, Corky's out of combat speed on the map is massively increased as well as his second ability's range and damage with an added slow on top. Perfect to secure either an objective, change the pace of a fight or making a proactive play. What happens next is exactly that, a proactive dive punishing JDG's lack of vision on the dragon side of the map, whereas Yezi and Lei have complete information on the location of JDG's roster. To seal the deal, Jazzy tags Juju Singed with a Phosphorus Bomb which reveals the area hit and champions that were hit by the spell. With Juju being low on HP and all information in Jazzy's hands, it's time to put that package to good use. Now take a good look at how Lei and Jazzy remove all possible risk from the following play. With Juju's location revealed and in midst of his recall animation, Lei uses the protobelt head buff pulverize combo to lock Juju in place. As that happens, Jazzy immediately pulls the trigger and packages slightly behind Juju to knock him further away from his own base and cut off his only possible escape route. This is one of Corky's unique strengths. Like Jazzy just altered the playing field in his favor, you can do the same. Look for an angle to use your package to either block off an entryway or split the fight. The decision is absolutely yours. Now let's move over to the item breakdown and why Jazzy is building the items that he is. His very first item is the Hullbreaker. Outside of the very first rotation with the package we've talked about, Jazzy's Corky likes to stay in the sideline. Here the Hullbreaker unleashes its full potential, making Corky sturdier as well as bolstering cannon minions it becomes virtually impossible for anyone on JDG to deal with this. As a matter of fact, he remained in the side lane and only ever left once another package for a proactive play was available. To put even more emphasis on the tankiness of this build, Jazzy adds the following items to the mix that make him impossible to kill. Through the HP and resistances from Hullbreaker, paired up with the stats of the Black Cleaver and the spellbed effect of the incoming Divine Sundra, Jazzy's Corky is now a side lane juggernaut. Compared to a full crit build, he deals less consistent damage and has mana issues without a blue buff. But you can't kill him. Lemon tried with everything he had, but failed as it wasn't something he could dream of achieving against the likes of Jazzy. Summarizing the idea behind those three items is turning Corky into a base damage machine that will never die and therefore outlive, out damage and out pressure you. It's time to accelerate the game with a bang and Jazzy thought the same. 
Due to his build, he's super tanky, which is very atypical of a hyper carry champion. As a consequence, he's allowed to package into the fray without fear of immediately dying for it. Surrounded by his allies Zhao Ma, 0711 and Lei, they take on Juju, Doki and Timeless. In the heat of the battle, Jazzy is caught by an onslaught of spells that block him in place and deal massive damage to him. With any other itemization, he would have died on the spot as he'd be way more of a priority target to quickly take out. After the initial casket of spells, Jazzy escapes the situation with a second ability and repositions himself in a way that allows him to consistently deal damage to JDG. It doesn't matter that Corky isn't built like a hyper carry who's crit oriented. All of Corky's spells are AoE and therefore just having a big chunk of attack damage among the Divine Sandro Spellblade bonus is enough to wipe the floor with anything in his way. Securing the dragon and forcing JDG to flee the scene, FPX now have their eyes set on the price. Baron Nasher. After securing the purple worm, this game is over, and Jazzy knows about this as well as all other players in this game. FPX is advancing forward in all three lanes, and nobody can stop them. Even worse, Jazzy has Baron Nash's buff, which empowers minions as well as the Hullbreaker. Therefore, all chess pieces slowly fall into place as FPX makes a conscious decision to slowly bleed out JDG by superior macro choices. JDG realizes the severity of the situation and is in fact in need of making a judgment call. They need to remove Jazzy from the map or they will lose no matter what they do. Zhengdu, Doki and Timeless take it upon themselves to try and stop Jazzy's advance, but forget about a certain detail. Jazzy isn't squishy at all. You can't just take him out and the empowered cannon is next to him channel a barrage of shots into the assailants as well. Misjudging the situation, JDG falls before Jazzy as his teammates capitalize on the opening they were granted. GG, well played. And now let's take a look at Jazzy's performance in numbers. Focusing on tankiness and unique champion strength, Jazzy did over 22,500 damage, showcasing exactly what a carry is even without signature carry items. Next to that he participated in 5 out of 8 tower kills, very nicely displaying the power of the splitting menace known as Hullbreaker Jazzy. Do you want to see more of him? Then prepare yourself for the Icons Global Championship 2022 in Singapore. From the 14th of June to the 9th of July, a series of action-packed games will unfold right in front of your eyes and all you have to do is tune in here.